Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Wonderful. Doing good. It's Monday night. You guys have a good Super Bowl weekend? weekend? So good. Yeah. Such, oh, a good, you, such a good game. No, you didn't have a good weekend. It was a good game, but you didn't have what, a good yeah. because they lost. That was honestly the best game, Super Bowl game I feel like I've seen in a long time. Last year that. was so much better. You're just saying that because the Pats won. No, because it was it was a miraculous was a comeback, twenty five points. It's just that no, was but just this facts. Was a better game throughout. No, this this game didn't have defense throughout. Still not bad, not a bad game. I would say it was probably number two Super Bowl of all time for sure. No, all time. I, this was much better. Nah. Yeah, I think this is the best Super Bowl of all time. I did make money for the first time ever on a game. Nice. Congrats. Like, I won, so you're... I won $200 uh, from the final score. So they kind of threw the sting off of it a little bit. So you're happy they lost. Good Sweet. for you. So now you got the gambling bug just in time when oh, you're going to start squares. to like, need your actual. Oh, it was just squares. squares. That doesn't count. Nice. I, I didn't know. see any of the games. I was on an airplane. Middle seat sucked. But you're a baseball guy. They, they weren't like showing it on the airplane. No, yeah. a lot of airplanes don't have TVs anymore. Anymore? That's stupid. Yeah, they what? used to, but no, now I, they. Have. I like only fly JetBlue, and they always do. Oh yeah, United, American, Virgin. They did. They just have a little spot for you to put your own device, like your iPad or your phone, and then That's you can get their Wi-Fi, which has their packages of movies and everything on there. That's stupid. That's how the newer planes do it. I hate that. I'm, that's like, I'm the rationally angry now. That, that, they, <laughs> save, they save money by not having those screens, mm -hmm. and they're charging you more money by having you rent their shitty-ass Wi-Fi. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's the game. And the Wi-Fi never works. No. Yeah. Because you're in a tin can 30,000 feet in the air. Imagine that. Yeah. I get scared flying these days. Didn't use to. I always, I always take a, a Ziploc baggie of uh, nips because you can bring those on the uh, on your carry on. Oh, nice! Get drunk. Yeah, because I mean, I, I need to be medicated for flights. I actually, I am so comfortable on flights. I can't remember the last time I was still awake when we left the gate. I normally really? like, fall asleep as soon as I get in my seat, and then wake up either as we're landing or within thirty minutes of when we're going to land. I could never do that. I, I well, wipe my foot whenever we take off, and if if I'm not fully aware of what's happening when we're landing, I may shit my pants. Because if that if that bump hits and I'm not paying attention, good night. Oof, yeah, I just flew a ton as a kid, so I got super comfortable with it, and now it's it just it's soothing to me. But we're not here to talk about flying. We're here to talk about movies this week specifically, Lady Bird. So let's give our snap impressions, uh, Jimmy. You were the first one of us to see it, so I'll let you give the first review. I saw this a long time ago. Uh, funnier than I thought it was going to be. Better than I thought it was going to be. This is the this is I love coming of age, and it's from two thousand. It's placed in two thousand four, which is you know I was uh, coming of two thousand two. Well, whatever, early two thousand, which is when I was like you know that age, a little younger, but. I loved it. it. It struck a lot of chords with me. I thought it was really good writing and acting and slice of life, normal stuff. I, I'm a big fan. My favorite movie of the year. I think I can say that squarely now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. Sheehan, how do you feel? Uh, fully in agreement. This movie was just wonderful. <laughs> I <laughs> laughed a lot, cried a little bit. It was just, if it, I feel like everyone sitting there in there with a with a family could relate to at least two, maybe three of the characters in the family, easily. Yeah. Uh, my, I checked three of those boxes. It was um, for sure. Yeah. It, it had some holes. It had some parts that I, I looking back on, I was like, well, this, that was kind of stupid. Um, we'll get into that later. But overall, just, I, I have to agree. It was top movie of the year for me. Wow, nice. I didn't know yep. uh, you were that much in, in agreement. Very much so. I walked out of that, like that. called my mom. I was like, hey, you need to see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I loved it as well. It's it's up there for me. Uh, everything you guys said I agree with. And I'm excited. I don't remember who I was talking to. It may have been with you off camera, Jimmy. But someone I was talking to with recently said, 
that they think this is the start of movies that are going to be nostalgic about when we were growing up in like the early 2000s because all the filmmakers from our generation are finally getting to make the films they want to make. And mm -hmm. so that we're going to get a wave of movies that based on that time frame and I'm I'm all here for it. It Yeah, I'm there. It hit me right, great. In the, right in the feels watching this movie a few times. So I didn't know Sir's Sir I didn't know her. Actually, I knew. Soramon. I seen like previews for Brooklyn before, and I. But she looks so different in this than Brooklyn because she because they made her look really raw without makeup, which was a good move. Mm -hmm. I didn't know her. I didn't know any of the actors really. The mom kind of looked familiar, but I wasn't positive. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, I legitimately had a moment where I was like, "Did they film this in the early 2000s?" And it just got tabled. The gay boyfriend <laughs> looked. So like th from that era, you and then the, oh man! But he's from oh. he's from Manchester by the Sea. I know that. Okay, good. So you couldn't have had that thought for too long. No, 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 no. It was like a split second where I was just okay. like, "Damn, this is really authentic to that time period." I thought it was really authentic to it, where I was like, "No," I, I I immediately was like, "No, that didn't happen, Jimmy." But. Just, <laughs> In my brain, I thought it was really authentic to that time. I, I, at first, I, when I said it was 2002, I was like, well, that's an odd time to pick. And I, I, I was kind of skeptical right off the bat. But it just, mm -hmm. it fit like a glove. I mean, I I was in high school in 2002. Um, so I was two years younger than, than her at this time. And I'll tell you, the... The baggy pants, the the the, the flares, the, the dyed hair, the 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 shirts, the the stripes, everything, everything made sense. The 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 binder full of CDs, it was the details were spot on, and I nostalgia was real in this one. Oh yeah, uh, you, agree. I'm a little bit old? younger than y'all, so I wasn't in high school yet, but every everything it was still like that when i was in high school and i knew at least half a dozen people that you could have dropped them into this movie and they would have fit in as characters perfectly oh and the puka shell necklace on the on the on danny <laughs> <Woo! Yeah. laughs> right, Do you know how they got they got the screen they got the effect to look like that no she she took the first prints of the the first like like sides or whatever, or slides, or I can't think of the term. She took them and she brought them to Walgreens or whatever and Xeroxed them 15 times until it looked kind of grainy and like a memory. And then she taught, brought it to her um, editor, colorist or whatever, and said, make it look like that. And that's wow. why it looked kind of grainy and old. Like It looked like a memory. I think maybe that was... Part of the I didn't notice that, but when you say I, it, yeah, okay, yeah, it makes a lot of sense watching a movie from that period. I yeah. hmm. noticed it, but I, I had kind of assumed that they it's just like an older camera or something. I didn't know that they had to do like Xerox it and bring it to a colorist, being like, make sure it looks old. It was I a they just used older filter. camera. It was one button well, filter. Really. I mean, that is like <laughs> the thing. Did you guys see uh, that Jake Johnson movie, like All for the Money or One for the Money or? He's a gambler, no. but that it was filmed in a handicam SD and it looked like really grainy and shit. And it was like, my sister was like, why would they do that? There's nicer cameras, but it's like a feel thing. But I thought they did a bad job. This one I thought did a nice job. It was kind of a little subtle, but it was cool. Yeah. I love when, I love when directors do that. The first time I've ever heard that had being done was a little fun fact for you. Mel, uh, Mel Brooks. He's the first one to actually go backwards in time. For uh, young Frankenstein, he demanded that it be uh, shot in black and white. And this was like two or three years after the boom of color. And everyone was like, why the fuck would you want to go back to black and white? It's like, <laughs> oh, it's Transylvania, my man. And it works it. for that movie perfectly, too. Perfectly. Yeah. Fun facts. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I thought this movie was a lot funnier than I expected it to be. I, I laughed out loud. I know there was two jokes or scenes that I was like really laughing, as if it was as if it was like the same way I'd laugh at Super Bad or, or Pineapple Express. Like I was laughing, and then there was what a lot scenes? of other times where I was giggling. The scene where the priest 
has all the kids in drama. He sits them down and says, "Okay, let's let's play let's play a game." First to cry wins. And it's just like <laughs> the the setup there is hilarious. Like putting a bunch of teenagers and saying first to cry, because then they're all just sitting around awkwardly. You know, they're thinking of like grandma dying or their dog dying and they're all just sitting there thinking about terrible things and then when he breaks first because he's depressed <laughs> he, it's like it's like he just felt a cry coming on and it's and he, he he knew he was about to lose it so instead of just crying in front of the kids he was like let's play a game guys let's play everyone real quick let's play a game first to cry loses and then he cries when he started crying i lost it, it was hilarious yep yeah the, my, I saw this movie twice, actually, and both times my entire theater was, like, dying laughing at this. Scene. Oh, in mine, I was, like, the only one that truly, like, found it, like, tr- like really funny. Really? I, I think you're supposed to find it funny, right? It's supposed to be, I like, dark so. humor. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think some people found it a little sad, because it is. I mean, like, a, he's, no, it was, he's depressed. I, yeah. I, I found it, I was like, oh, I smiled at that, but I was, I was genuinely like, oh, that sucks. I, I, I did feel bad for that guy. I, it, was, it was genuinely it was like, oh shit. That I scene later in the movie when he's with her mom and saying, "Please don't tell Lady Bird about this." I was like, oh, this poor guy. He's like, yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize until um, the end of that scene that that was her deal. I thought she was like a regular nurse. Oh no! Yeah, I didn't know she was. I didn't. Was there any like signs of that before that point? No, I don't yeah. think so. I can't remember. No. I don't know. Well, it was definitely driven home there for sure. Um, the, yeah. the other funny part that I burst out laughing is when she, when that uh, abortion lady was talking, and, oh. <laughs> and she just goes, "Well, maybe if you were aborted, we wouldn't have to sit through the stupid assembly." Yeah. <laughs> yep, that was a winner. <laughs> so oh, this, mean. Yeah. Teenagers are so harsh like that, where they'll just cut you straight to your core right away like my little brother he's 10 years younger than me sometimes you just say things it's like dude like you can't go that mean so quickly <laughs> yes yeah, so yeah, and they, like the, the the line before that would actually kill me more because she was it's funny fu- things are funny to me when they're actually like proving someone wrong mm-hmm. it's like just because it's unsettling doesn't mean it's wrong you take a picture mm-hmm. of my vagina during the during the period i was yeah. done at that point i was like mm-hmm. oh my god it's so true and you just school this girl right in her face but then it's like Jimmy was saying, kids just take it from zero to 60 immediately. She, she yeah. had proven her point, And then it was just like, if you had been aborted, we wouldn't have this assembly. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Like yeah she yeah, was like, like <laughs> she genuinely proved her point and won the argument without being ruthless or mean. And then she just stomped on her. Yeah. Throat. Like, yeah. You know, you fucking, saying, like, welcome to the it, mud. You, you give an inch and take a mile. That was, that was with that. It got a little, the door opened up a little bit. She's like, all right, boom. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, I what was, else you guys? Do? I was hoping you were going to say the um, the coach taking over the play because that, oh, no, that was that was that was that was that me, was the worst part of the whole. Yeah, movie. that was like a bad. That was like a bad SNL skit. That was every yeah. every teenage uh, high school movie ever in the nineties and two thousands. Uh huh. Maybe it was you know, an homage I, to that. I, I legit like just I rolled so hard when that I was it, it, mm-hmm. I, that's probably I one like, of the worst. And, and yeah. the, when they cut back to it, and he was like, "All right, you're gonna come." Then he's like, "The wild life, that's singing, that's singing. You're quiet." I smirked at that absolutely. Well, yeah, no, I, I, but I, I like stupid. But yeah. I chuckled at it like the first time I saw the movie, but the second time I was like, "Ah, this is this is kind of dumb." Mm-hmm. But I will say. I think it paid off a little bit at the end when he's just the most excited when they're watching the play at the very end. Yeah, I agree. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah! Back to it. it came back to it. Yeah. yeah. Put a little bow I, on I it. Did like that. Um, one of my negatives, but it's, I don't know, it wasn't really a negative, but one of the things I, I, I walked out thinking of, um, do you, have you guys watched Sopranos? Yeah. All right. Most of um, yeah. If you if you binge it, the last like two or three seasons, it's like everyone's depressed. Oh, here's my depression. There's the pre-, and it's like really harps on that. Everyone in this movie was fucking depressed, and there was a point where I was like, oh well, you don't the friend when she's sitting on the couch crying. Well, sometimes I don't know why I'm, I'm not sad. I just need to cry. 
yeah, she's depressed. Like the teacher was depressed. Her father was depressed. Her mother works in the depression clinic. It's like, I get it. You didn't need. It was. I think that's need. true. I think every. I think everyone's yeah. depressed. Yeah, I, I think that was fairly accurate, and I, I thought the movie did a great job showing that even though a lot of people are depressed some of the time, they also have tons of times when they're happy and enjoying life. It was one of my favorite things about the movie. Yeah, I, that's, I like that because I truly am. I think life sucks. And I think oh, everyone, yeah. everyone is sad at some points. And if you're not, you're just, you're not in touch with like life or your feelings, but you can overcome it 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. I enjoy a good cry every now and then. Absolutely. That's why, and that's you why thinking this is bad, John, just shows that you're a sociopath. Yeah. I didn't say it was bad. <laughs> I, I purpose to say it like, it's not really a bad thing, but it's noticed it. I felt like put the, the, the friend crying alone on the couch, pushed it over the edge for me. Like it was like one one nod too much. You don't think the fat nerdy girl who clearly wouldn't get a date to prom wouldn't cry prom night? No, I think it's that's, that's, was... that's pretty self explanatory. We knew that would happen, but the line where it says, I don't know, sometimes I cry. People just I just cry yeah. because I cry. It's yeah. just it was, was a little too much. That uh the fat friend Whatever I'll call her, that fat friend. Um, sure, fat I liked friend. her. She's a good character. She's Jonah Hill's sister. No, in real life. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Um. Well, I liked, not liked. It was like sad, but I liked that they put it in there when she kind of knew who she was and she won the lead in the play and they had the kiss scene, and Lady Bird was kind of upset and she's like, "Well, this is probably you know my only shot at that." No, no, that was good. I, I laughed at that one. I laughed. I, I, I laughed, and it was also I liked that they put it in there. She's a little self aware, very self aware. Mm -hmm. A lot of high schoolers aren't, aren't like that. Because no, or maybe they are, but they don't voice it. They just you know usually it's the heavy. They're very brazen and in your face because they think that's yeah. the better way to yeah. go about They'll it. They just lashed out at the the abortion lady. By the way, that was a little bullshit. I, I thought that in the tryouts, uh, Sersha Ladybird was phenomenal. Yeah, she was outgoing. She had a great song. She had a little tempo. She she was very versatile. <laughs> her and, dance was uh, pretty funny. It was pretty good. And then her friend comes up there and then grabs like the lead role when she was me. Oh, I'm thinking I, more about it. Maybe that's the teacher connecting with the other depressed person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Maybe. knowing the ladybird just going to be a lot to handle. Not no coachability yeah. there. Yeah, she came in already had her own routine, and then this other girl who I think had a better voice, but clearly wasn't as like animated. He's like, this girl like needs a boost of confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Okay. Give this girl the, the lead. Yep. Fine. I think they. I think this movie did a really good job identifying with like the teen, on like so teen movies. There's always coming of age, and it's like I don't know what I want to do in my life, and then it clicks. Or like usually, it's actually they actually know what they want to do. They just have to overcome an obstacle to get there. And then, you know, I want to be an engineer and then they have to overcome all these obstacles. And the end scene is them going to engineering school. You know what I mean? I like that Lady Bird knew she wanted to do something big, but had no idea what it was or what her skill sets were. She had no yeah. idea what she was good at. She just knew she wanted to be good at something. And I connect way more with that than having a goal and not being and having obstacles. Like the biggest obstacle yep. for me in high school is what's my goal, even in college. Like what do I want to be? Yeah, for sure. I, I love the scene when she was talking to the head nun lady and she's like, oh, I want to be in the math leads. And the nun was like, well, you're not good at math. And she's like, that we that know of know yet. Of. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. good line. That was the most teenager line ever when she said, my father's good at math. Why aren't I good at math? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you have to try. It's, there's yeah. effort involved. I, what we can we talk about the mom? Because I hate I yeah. hate her, and I and th really there's smidges of truth. Like I have two, I have two sisters and a mom, and the way they fight and how ruthless they are is true. They can it can be like crazy at times. Anyone when they when the when the director pitched this, I forgot about this. I read an article when she pitched it the screen when she pitched it to men who were married. And with daughters or who grew up with sisters, they all said, this is exactly how my wife and my daughter are. Or this is exactly how my sister and my mom were. And when she pitched it to men who didn't, weren't or like single men without si sisters, they're like, this is, they're so mean. This can't be real. So there it's is real. like a touch real, but I thought the mom was too mean for me. Like, nah. 
I didn't. I really hated her. Uh, that's why I, I like the line uh, when when the nurse the, the nuns going over with her, like how well she wrote about Sacramento, and she says like like you like you like you love it. She says, well, no, I just pay attention. And she's like, well, paying attention is sort of the same thing. That's what the mother was doing. You know, a lot of attention doesn't seem. Yep. You know, she's like hovering. She's very controlling. She's all up in her business, but she really did care. And she just wanted the yeah, best. Yeah, but her mother I, was I a raging think... alcoholic, so like in her mind, she's doing much, much better. Yeah, but the the scene when they're getting her prom dress and she's like, "Do you like me?" And mom's like, "Well, yeah, I love you." And she's like, "No, but do you like me?" And she couldn't answer that. That yeah, was like, like the most heartbreaking was... moment to me. Like I started crying. Was... I was like, "That's so mean." Lie yeah. to the kid. Word That's for word. Too much. No, word for word, that happened in my house with my yeah. sister and my mom. Yeah. I'll never, I'll never forget that. And she was like, oh, fuck. That's too mean. Like, as like actual parenting, my mom just instilled, like, confidence in us. She said she grew up really unconfident, so she would just tell us, like, someone, like, you know, we didn't get invited to someone's birthday party. She'd be like, fuck them. Why, why, they're, why would they not want to hang out with you? You know, that's just, like, pumped confidence, but not in a corny or a nap. Like, you... You kind of knew she was doing it, but then it still resonated. Mm -hmm. And when the well, this mom to straight up be like, I can't answer if I like you or not. Like, come on. I also hated. I think it shows how tough being a parent is. But Lady Bird gets her first kiss, and she's screaming down the street. She's so happy. And mm -hmm. then she, her mom, ruins her night because what? She didn't like put towels away or something, or she came home a little late. Well, she like was, didn't fold time. the skirt right. She yeah. didn't fold. Yeah, and it's like. You just ruin if if the mom could step back and like watch that on replay ten years later and realize that her daughter was having one of the best nights of her young life and she ruined it over folding laundry, she would yeah. kick herself. It was a hard thing Which, to yeah I've, yeah. I feel but, like you know, we she, could she also didn't know and, and uh, oh, sorry, go on. Well, she, she she didn't know and she um and she proved later on that there was a lot of things she wished she had done differently and she wished. She wasn't a very good um, communicator at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, she cared, but then, you know, like obviously your husband's out of work and you're all worried about appearances. It was basically she couldn't yell at her husband because she's a nurse at the pressure clinic looking at the press guy without a job. So she took it out on the daughter instead. Yeah. And there was times where she was good too. Like she lets her, I'm guessing the adopted son's girlfriend or wife, Had whatever. Live with I, them. I thought it was like from a first marriage or something, mm, or like maybe. high school. Thought, like she had him when she was in high school or something. They, I, I kind of like the fact that they never even touched upon that. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, obviously, she was very nice to let her live there. And then also, when Lady Bird comes home and they're drunk or high in the kitchen looking for food, and she doesn't yell at them, she kind of just lets them be young and dumb in the kitchen. That was nice. But she still got the dig in, being like, "We wish you were here for Thanksgiving," and then walk oh, away. I think that's I think that's like half nice, half warranted. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ! She just walked in on him, a drunken high, and that's the worst she's going to say. I think they got pretty pretty good. Yeah, I was fair. ready for her to be a bitch to to everyone. Mm -hmm. My mother would have beat me senseless if that was the situation. So yeah, yeah, very nice. And you know what the sad part is? The ladybird, she'll think she'll grow up for the next couple of years thinking she got away with something and not realize. How much of a pass and how nice her mother was. Yeah. You know? Also, when her mom and the dad and they all kind of like had it out in the living room, and the mom was like, How do you think we feel when you say other side of the tracks? And how do you think your dad feels when you make him drop you off far away from school so people don't see your car? That shit, Ladybird was being the super bitch, and the mom was, she should have said that earlier because that is fucked. That's ruthless yeah. shit. Yep. Yeah, that was mean. So everyone had their flaws. I, I thought the mom was a little too mean at times. I thought Lady Bird was. She never really lashed out. She just always. She just wanted love. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Yes. But like, she was. There, there was some things like like you were saying when she would make the dad stop and get out. But I I, I sympathize with that so much because kids are stupid. They don't realize how much that would hurt their like dad's feelings. And she's yeah. like, oh, I just like to walk. That's fine. One hundred percent. But I think. You have to tell the kid, like it was like the way the mom did, like yelled at her for it and made her realize. Because Lady Bird, once she realized that she was hurting her dad by doing that, she felt super bad. She didn't even realize that she was hurting him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she was okay with like yelling at her mom and, and hurting her mom, 
but her dad was like her rock and her her like her good guy. When she yeah. found out that she was hurting him seriously, mm-hmm. that that's a dagger to anyone. Yeah, I think I think she was sure. on. I think she was unaware that he realized what was happening and that it hurt. Yeah. So it was good that the mom put it out there. Yeah, you need that kind of parent out there. Absolutely. Uh, what, what did you think about the like the the stereotypes or whatever the tropes like the gay kid, the artistic kind of douchebag kid, the slutty mm-hmm. hot ch- dumb cheerleader, fat best I mean, friend. I like think they it, had all. It could have been all- very cliche, but they handled them all very well. I felt. I See, that's the thing. I, 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 was, I was kind of out on the gay kid at first, and then when he corners her at the cafe and like breaks down crying, well, beautiful scene. I, I was like, all right, they're they're actually treating this with respect and not just like, oh, hey, it's funny, the token gay kid in theater. That that was that scene was one of my favorites in the whole movie, and it also it, it reminded me a lot of uh, Three Billboards when they're they all both have their guards up, and then. Um, Francis McDormand gets the blood full of face because uh, he, he coughed at her, and they all like went completely nurturing. And it was like, all right, well, this is real. Mm-hmm. When he started breaking out crying, she was like, oh shit, all right. And she became real Christina, not Lady Bird anymore. She was like, you know, yeah, she's was down, down down her team, yeah. We're gonna tell people, and yeah, her teenager douchebag self got dropped, and she was a real person. Yeah. Yep. But no, I, I felt like the other stereotypes. Yeah, the stereotypes, but. They felt uh, like also they were, fully like, actualized characters. Yeah, I don't. Too. Yeah, I, I think it's easy to say there was stereotypes and, and tropes and stuff, but go to any high school, they're there. It's not mm-hmm. like it's fake or they're, they're forcing it. Like they exist yeah. in every single school. It's a reason it's, those it, are common tropes. It's like there's a sign up sheet in middle school to figure out, all right, who's going to be the goth kid? All right, that's going to be me. And yeah. they move on. <laughs> but they did a really good job not just making them those tropes, making them flushed out character. Yep. Maybe not the douchebag boyfriend. Oh, oh he, he was just hardcore douchebag. <laughs> he he uh, was so funny that I'm I'm really trying to not be a part of the economy. I said yeah. fuck you <laughs> under my breath so many times today. The fact that she I kept laughing it. thinking he was joking. He was like, no, I'm serious. They're planning trackers in our heads. <laughs> I loved yeah. when he was like, come hang- I can't think of the name right now. He was like, we're going to go hang out here. The deuce. The deuce. The deuce. So. And then she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to the deuce. And they pull up, and it's an empty parking lot. <laughs> she's like, this is the deuce. That's so high school. I yep. mean, that we our parking lot it was called The Bowl. And then there was, an, like, another town I lived in. It was Wendy's parking lot where, like, there was a, a little nickname for that. And you just hang out in parking lots. Oh, yeah. We we have one like lot. in a corner in the corner of a mall parking lot. Everyone would go and just sit in like the parking lot there. Yeah, but that was a good parking lot. It had a tree, a little piece of grass. It was a perfect parking lot. Oh yeah, I guess now, why it was you, so good. When you guys were in high school, did you have people like the hot the hot chick who didn't want to leave town? That was just like, no, I want to live here my whole life. Why would you want to leave? Yes, yes. She actually got in my real life that hot chick. Got married like a month after graduating high school, and still lives there. See, yeah, I never, I, I never had that many people. Sorry, Shane, but no, until I, I moved to California, in California, everyone I met, like not everyone, obviously, people, everyone, what, like majority, like why would you want to leave California? You got to snow up there, you got to surf there. Why would you want to leave? And it was the first time the majority of people was said that because in New Jersey, Connecticut, Illinois, everyone was like, can't wait to get out of here and go see the world. And then I moved to California, and they're like, no, why would I want to leave? Yeah. Yeah. The world comes here. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I graduated with uh, 420 people. So there's a bunch of people in my class, and uh, there are probably like six, six or seven girls, like the hot girls, the cheerleaders who, um, who now have three, four kids maybe, and they're all hairdressers, and they're all very yes. pride and Peabody, you know, tanners for life guys, <laughs> and they're all they go tanning, and they have a uh, the dyed black hair. And uh, yeah, they're all shitheads, and uh, they'll <laughs> die in puberty. Nice. I mean, good yeah, for them. Do what you like, but it's weird. They're not happy. They're not happy people. <laughs> I want to talk about the end, but I don't know if you guys have anything else before we get there. Uh, um, no. okay. I wanted. I wanted to bring up there was some subtle, like not so subtle symbolism stuff here and there. What I liked uh, after she 
I, I, lo I love the first half of the movie. They had the, the pink cast. And then mm. after um, she found out that the, the her boyfriend was gay, immediately after, I guess, they gets cut off. And it, you so her her visual appearance from, from her happy times to the jaded teenager who was lied to, her, her image changed entirely. Immediately threw on a flannel and worked in a cafe. Exactly. Lose lose the pink happy cast, and uh, now she's upset and dating the Moody Moody's uh, bassist for the shitty uh, local band. <laughs> yes, my note. The Go filmmaking. <laughs> did you notice that when there? I thought the filmmaking of like Sacramento was really done with love, and the filmmakers from Sacramento, so that makes sense. But like, or the scenery, and when she was walking in front of the houses they wanted to live in, they were walking. Uh, right to left, which is backwards in American brains, right? Mm -hmm. and when she got to New York City, she was doing the same exact thing, walking around New York City, looking at all the houses taking in, but now it was left to right because she was finally moving forward in her life. Oh, mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. How about that? That was nice. Other than that, I, that. I, didn't, I didn't like the direction it took that much when she got to New York. I wanted her to be like, yes, I'm here. I'm Ladybird, and go just be herself and discover. And she kind of clammed up. But I, I think yeah. that's also more realistic of people. It is. They they want all this like grand f leaving home. They're gonna go conquer the world. They're gonna go move to New York, and then you get there, and it's overwhelming, and you you kind of just regress a little bit. And it, yeah. it was a very humbling moment for her as soon as she left. She got the letters. It. Um, Le leaving Sacramento was a was a big deal because her mother fucking hated her. Oh, Kevin. dude, her her mom not saying goodbye to her at the airport. Fuck Wrong. that. She made both times I saw the movie, I cried and I was like, this fucking bitch. So like, mean. And then to not send the letters. Oh, that's what I really hated. Lady Bird had to call her. Yep. I was waiting yep. for the mom to finally call her and like do it. And at the end, Lady Bird still had to call home and be like. I'm sorry. I miss you. And I hated that. I, I really wish that Lady Bird stuck it out and made her mom be the one to apologize. But Lady yeah, Bird's a better person than her Lady Bird's yeah. better person than her mother. So and it kind of gives you like the hint that like her mom's mom was a raging alcoholic. Her mom was very strict and harsh and bad at communication. So you hope like when Lady Bird has kids, she's gonna be even better and kind of like keep progressing down the line. Mm-hmm. Because she was willing I mean, to be the bigger. You guys person. ever have the style and treatment done to you like that? Mm -hmm. From parents? Yeah. Yeah. The style and treatment, I, I ever like it happened monthly for me when I was growing up. And I like, wouldn't... yeah, sorry. At first, when it happens, you're like, "All right, yeah, fine. I'm mad at you too. Up, up yours. I'll take this. You don't talk to me. That's cool." And then by like day two and a half, three, that that scene of her screaming at her face, "Talk to me! Talk to me!" in front of the uh, the, the sink. That was what yeah. everyone thinks. Everyone's like, just, just give me attention. I'm sorry. I'll do anything. Like that, <laughs> it reminded me of like people commit, like uh, uh, admitting to double murders that they had nothing to do with. There's like just grind them down. Yeah. Yeah. False confession. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'll, never leave. I'll never do it again. So, you know she's lying, but she'll say yeah. anything. Yeah, I was. I was. I'm always like a apology within two seconds. Uh, make it, or, like do whatever. Make them try to make them laugh. Like I would, if my mom was mad at me, I would be upstairs in like three seconds like sorry sorry sorry, sorry i'm sorry, not uh you cannot hold a grudge against me friend i will not let you <laughs> like i will i will break you in two seconds <laughs> that sucks. having grudges is the w dumbest most pointless thing in the world yeah like uh, if we're if we're not going to be mad at each other in in two days then we're going to cut the bullshit out right now and be fine <laughs> yeah Fair. I, don't think, I, don't, I don't have an inmate to, to give a silent treatment because when i'm upset i like blow up and like yeah. I, I yell, I scream, but it, it lasts maybe thirty seconds to a minute, and then I'm completely good. I get it out, get it out of your system. Work yeah. it out. As soon, yeah. as soon as this is out, like sometimes I'll be angry and like I'll hold it in for like a day, and then I blow, and I'm like, five a minutes day. later, oh, like, I, I'll right. die with a day. Sure. Could never hold oh, it yeah. in that much. All right. We is there anything else? Anything else you wanted to add, or was that just it with the end? You wanted her mom to call. I wanted her mom to call. I wanted her to kind of like New York and be like spread her ring, spread her wings. I mean, yeah. it, it makes sense that she kind of climbs up. She kind of like not she's a little because she's out of her element. But 
I get yeah. I got a little mad she turned her back on Sacramento when she first San when Francisco. the guy was like Yeah, the guy was like, Where are you from? She's like Sacramento. He couldn't hear us. She was like, No, San Francisco. I was like, Oh, well, come on. You just like went through this I think profound thing. I don't know if that's I don't know if there's a grander meaning to that or if that's just like an homage or to people from the area because you ask me where I'm from, I'd just say San Francisco and I live an hour and a half away. Yeah, I guess that I always say I'm from uh, Miami and I'm from like an hour north of Miami. Yeah, I'm from yeah, Boston, I, but I'm really from Peabody. I think it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, it, it wasn't turning back, it's just like generalizing, you know? Yeah. No, I, feel- I mean, Sacramento is a big enough place where you, people know Sacramento. They have, a, they have their own NBA team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. know where it is. Do you know where it is in California? Not a clue. <laughs> I think it's by San. It's by San Francisco, right? A little more north, more east. All I know is San Jose, San Francisco, and San Jose and Oakland. That little trifecta, and then LA is way the fuck down there. And after that, I'm lost. Yeah, well, it's pretty really good though for a number of years, yeah. actually twice, but you know. Okay, pretty- and now we're yeah. talking geography. Yeah. Let's hop into our official reviews, critic scores. Uh, what are we giving it? Sheehan, what are you? Strong. What are you giving it? Very strong. Um, I'm not sure where we rank. Uh, I didn't. I didn't go over our, our last ones or our other ones to see where it goes. I'm gonna. Go I did. Did you? Because I, I wanted to make sure I didn't mess it up. Um, <laughs> off off the cuff, I got to go 95. I'm, I'm taking five percent off uh, just because of the stupid coach thing, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the stupid coach thing really bothered me, but only five yeah. percent worth. So ninety-five, it's, it's, it's a solid score. All right, Jimmy? I'm going. I'm going ninety-five as well. Same exact thing. Hey. I, it's my favorite movie. I think it. It was funnier than I wanted it to be. It had this just enough seriousness to it. Thought it was well acted, and it was like we said. It's a lot. It's a high school cliche somewhat movie but it really didn't come off like a cliche movie i thought it was really well done also think it's lightning in a bottle like i don't this director writer nothing against her greta gerwig or whatever i doubt she can ever do an, another make another movie at this level it seems like this is so personal and it's such a like story that she knew all the nuances to i'm interested to see what she makes next but i think this is lightning in a bottle where she Made like she had about. this story in her for years and like yes. finally got to make it. Yeah, like this yep. was her masterpiece that she's put 15 years into. Like a lot of times how bands first albums are so good and then they have to figure out what the next one's gonna be. I'm like, well, that was my whole life. Yeah. Uh but, yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm up there with you guys. I, I wrote it down beforehand. I'm giving it a 93. Really love the movie. I think it was great. It's, I think that's the highest 94, I've given. Yeah, 94.3. I think Mudbound got a 93, which was our, our next highest after this. Okay, yeah, I think this is definitely better than Mudbound. Yeah, yeah, Mudbound's yeah, a little heavier. <laughs> yeah, the Just only little... thing only thing we ranked higher than that is uh, Stranger Things season two. It was ninety eight, I believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we really like that. We really loved it. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. I think I think we all know what the popcorns are going to be. I, That's I don't five. Know. Five. Oh, I had a four. No, well, it's five. I had a five. <laughs> I, <laughs> right. I was. I was like kind of giddy watching it because I just enjoyed it so much. Yeah, I had such a good time watching this movie. It was like sad and sweet and heartfelt. And I just like – it ended on a somber note, but I walked out of the theater with a big grin on my face being like, I enjoyed that and I enjoy life. I I just – I loved Saoirse's character so much. Like every time she was talking, she never said anything boring. Mm-hmm. And every you know, every line was something witty and gave myself like I smirked, I chuckled, and I was like I was wishing I was I, I went and watched it by myself and I wish someone else was there to like so I can like just kind of give a little elbow like yeah I love that guy you know yep. yeah and the, but the it, pacing it was good mm-hmm. I agree yeah but it was also never none of her lines felt like they were too witty for a teenager nope. they no felt it, was, like it was spot on something that me or like my friends would say back in the day yeah this is, it goes back to nostalgia like this is everyone I wanted to be when I was that age. Yeah, yep. 100%. So awesome. if we were going to see the movie again, what would we drink with it? I'm going to start this off. I would drink a Manhattan while watching this movie. Oh, because she went to New York, so it is. Uh, uh, Got nice. it? Yeah. Yep. All right, Shane, what are you drinking? 
I'm drinking a uh, a Shirley Temple. Why? I'm chasing it. I'm, ch I'm chasing it with uh, some Christ crackers. Wow, <laughs> that's creepy. Right. That's what they were snacking on. <laughs> I'm drinking Soco Armoretto lime. Okay. Oh, so I think it's, why? You don't know. You don't know the reference. No. no. None of you guys are brand new fans or were back in the day. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to stay 18 forever. <laughs> yep. All right. That's, uh, that, that brought me back a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, that, that album, Deja Antenu, that never left my, my car in high school. Yeah. And, the and, whole we'll time. and we'll never miss a party because <laughs> <laughs> we keep them going constant. Such teenage. It, it really is bad. <laughs> it's, it's, but it's so good. Like, yep. It's bad, but it's good. Really good. I'm going to stay right. forever. That, that wraps up our review of Lady Bird. Let's, uh, we're not doing, oh, are we? Checking time. We are not going to be doing yeah. our weekly recommendations, but we got a special treat for y'all. We're going to break down each of our top five movies of 2017. How do you guys want to do this? Should we start at number five and like work our way up, or just? I think we got to do our own list. You give your you give your list. Gene gives it. However, one list okay. at a time. All right, one list. Everybody knows the rules. Shane, what's your list? All right. Um. All right, I'm going to go uh, five first, okay? All right, I like that. we okay. got to build up to our favorite movies of the year. All right, so uh, maybe a bit of a surprise, because considering how much I hated the original, Blade Runner 2049. Woo! Such a, such a strong movie. It, that's one that marinates with you. It's it's a it's like a fine wine. Woo! The more, the more you sit with it, the more I sit here and talk with you guys about movies, the more I'm thinking that one was just fantastic. It really, I can't wait to watch it again. All right, uh, four, three billboards outside of Missouri with huh? my ending. Three billboards? <laughs> All right. Uh, number three is easy. It's I, Tanya. Uh, I got, you guys haven't seen that yet? I haven't no. seen it yet, so it's hard. Yeah, I know. It is. I, I love what they did with, the, um, with how, how they shot and told the story with the conflicting interviews. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, and this, I just love that story in general. I can't get enough of that whole uh, Olympic ordeal. Every every documentary is just just as fascinating as the next. Perfect. Number two, Logan. Superhero movie, yes. Up for an award, should be up for more awards. Yeah, it definitely got snubbed. This is the death of the first the, the first death of a superhero we've ever seen in major cinema, and is one of the biggest superheroes out there, Jimmy. Right? Well, two really. Two, yeah. Yeah. Superman. Well, no, I meant two he ain't in this dead. movie. Superman's not dead yet. Okay. Well, he was, kind of, but he came no. back. Spoiler he's, alert. See, he's back, so he's not dead. Number one, spoiler, Lady Bird. Nice. Yep. But nice. I have an honorable mention. Okay. okay. I have a couple on. If we're doing honorable mentions, I have a couple. You get one I, honorable I, mention. Yeah, I do an honorable mention because for this <laughs> podcast alone, Logan Lucky. It was our first podcast together. Go back and off. listen to it. Horrible audio quality. Subscribe. Rate five stars. I was hung over as shit. I uh, I didn't prepare recommendations. Didn't rec I didn't prepare anything. I just kind of stumbled onto the computer and started chit chatting at twelve in the morning on Sunday. Thank God we just stopped doing it in the, in the mornings. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always going to think of Logan Lucky and think, oh yeah, that's the, that's what kicked off uh, Six Pack Cinema. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Nice. Yes. That's, that's a solid little uh, solid memory there. Jimmy, you want to go next or you want me to? You go. Okay. I will start with uh, my number five, Baby Driver. I don't Ooh, think it was like the that. most well-made movie of the year, but I recently rewatched it, and I just it reminded me how much fun I had watching it in theaters last year, and it, was, it completely caught me by surprise. I saw the trailer two days before I saw the movie, and I was like, all right, I'll go see that, not realizing the whole movie was going to be synced to his soundtrack. And it's just, it was a great time. And sometimes that's all you need from a movie. That's, that's really all you need. Yeah. 
All right, my number four is It. <laughs> love the movie. Love the book. That's my all-time favorite book. Felt like this was a better adaptation than the 19, was it 91 TV series, miniseries. Sure. Just loved it. Pennywise scared the shit out of me growing up. Read that book way too young and couldn't sleep like through a night for at least a month. So I'm excited for part two to come out next year, I think. Number three, Wind River, which was the uh, thematic sequel to Hell or High Water, which is in my top three movies of all time. Mm-hmm. And I, I just anything from that writer, he he wrote Sicario as well. So I didn't know that was a sequel. It's it's not like actually people are saying like Sicario, Hell or High Water, and Ten then Universe. Wind River are like it's thematically like very similar. Really, but okay. they're, they're not, it's not, it's not a any sequel. overlap. In, yeah, okay. they're not. There's no. It's like story saying overlap. it's like saying Quentin Tarantino's movies are all in the same universe. Oh, uh, okay. I can buy that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, love that. Number two, Lady Bird, as we just discussed. I, I really love that one. And then number one, Blade Runner 2049. Like I, I loved it when we first saw it. And since then, my love for it has only grown. It's understandable. It's a perfect movie. Somebody got me a very nice bottle of the Blade Runner official whiskey that I am looking to crack open probably Oscar night. Enjoy that nice. while I'm watching the Oscars. And watch cool Blade Runner win way too many Oscars. Well, not it's enough Oscars, really. It's win zero, but I, I, I think it'll it get. Wait, and one more thing, I realized this uh, either this week or last week. Remember during our Blade Runner episode when I said a lot of the effects were practical and you guys were shitting on me? Yep. Just so you know, every city shot besides mm-hmm. for the holograms it was shot with miniatures. You broke that up, qualifies as special effects. But no, but yeah, but they're not. I was saying it wasn't CG, and you guys were saying you no, said, it's all CG. No, 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 no. no. Play the tape. Look, look, look back. The you said in. there was, there the was, all, there was no here. special effects. You're garbage people. No, that, that, no, that's you a special are garbage effect, people. Sir. Yeah, it's obviously that's... special effects. They didn't build actual hologram machines. But holograms that's running around. That's what we were trying. Reasons. That's what we were trying to tell you. Yeah. No, you're and an floating idiot. cars and motorcycles and robots. Totally real. Yes, no, you guys were saying it was all CGI, and I was saying no, they did a lot of it practically. Okay. Which is miniatures and that type of stuff. Okay, I, I think that if, if that's the case, then you misunderstood what we were t- trying to tell you. No, you guys are yeah. idiots and are backpedaling on your argument now. You're garbage, garbage person. person. I, I mean, I would still <laughs> I'm gonna say get that your kid miniatures uh, are special tiny effects. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jimmy, what's your uh, – and my honorable mention goes to Logan. I think that should have been nominated for more awards. All okay. Good. All right. My number five is Dunkirk. And excellent choice. I didn't like walk away from the theater loving it, thinking it would be my top five. But the more I think about that movie, the more I think it's the most uniquely made movie I've seen recently that really works. And it's bizarre. There's no characters, no plot, no dialogue. But. It has a plot. For sure it's a plot. Okay, no characters, no dialogue. Yeah. I, I understand what you mean. It's it was and a you're whole fully different way of doing and you're fully immersed in and feel what they're feeling. And you Kinda can't stuff. figure it out until like well a third of the way through. You 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 start piecing together. I like when you have to piece things together as as yeah. you go. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Number four, disaster artist. I thought that was a really good mix of humor and wild it's a wild real life story. And they kind of made him humanized, whatever. Disaster artist. Number three, Mudbound. Mm-hmm. Rewatchability not up there, but I thought like that is also in the feels. So I got a lot of heavy hitters. There you go. Number two, Wind River. We should have probably reviewed this movie if me and Dave like it this much. There's one scene in Wind remember. River that is I so I think good. that came out right before we started to do the podcast. I the think we scene, just missed that Dave, window. The scene where they're walking to the trailer and he goes, "Why are you flanking me? You see that? You see that? You're flanking me." Oh, so good! Dude, I just got goosebumps for that scene. I I, I rewatched that scene like twice now. Just that scene because it's or the so whole, well. Done. I think the whole John Barenthal scene as well. Who? Which one? John Barenthal, he, the guy who's the Punisher. Mm. Mm. Still He's in not, that. Still not there. In the train. Oh yes, the fl- the flash. I'm trying to like not give things away. Thank yeah. you. 
Yeah, when I was, it's a flashback, and it's brutal. It's also really heavy. Uh, and yes. then one Ladybird. Ladybird. Honorable mention. I don't feel at home in this world anymore on Netflix. That was a nice, fun crime thingy. Oh, I've never heard with, of that. With uh, Elijah Wood? No, not Elijah Wood. Yeah, Elijah Wood. And cool. the New Zealand. Sweet. All awesome. Right. Those are top five movies we recorded in February. Cool. Yeah. Perfect Makes timing. Sense. <laughs> well, that wraps up this week's episode of Six Pack Cinema. Tune in next week, and we will be reviewing The Darkest Hour. See you guys next week. Bye. 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 All right. We're still live. Still live. Yeah, we're still live. See you guys.